Maganda Gavipo, Señor Lahat. Uh, I have the pleasure tonight uh, to introduce uh, to uh, an historian, uh, Mr. Uh, Rolando Borinaga. De presentarles. Dr. Borinaga, Dr. Borinaga, whom I had the pleasure and the honor to meet him, honor, uh, diría, de, right one, one year ago, uh, almost one year ago, when we menos, went cuando, to, uh, to uh, these islands, he is going to talk about them, welcome uh, the ship, pues, uh, Juan Sebastián Elcano. Cuando so, uh, Elcano, Dr. Borinaga, Dr. Borinaga PhD, is uh, yeah. also very well known es all over the country muy conocido en todo el país. because he's the expert, expert es la autoridad on Leite and Samar history. But very particularly uh, on the Giga uh, episode. So sobre este episodio que vamos a hablar. The, book, uh, Balanguiga, the Balanguiga conflict revisited. El conflicto de Balanguiga que vamos a hablar. That was a finalist for the 2003 uh, National Book Award in History. El premio a uh, well, uh, la historia. A good number of essays and of research on history, y especially in the Eastern Visayas. Sobre todo and el... also he uh, had made very important translations. También ha hecho uh, importantes traducciones muy importantes de libros. From uh, authors like Father Cantius Kovac, uh, for instance, Cantius Kovac, the colonial Odyssey of Leite, Odyssey of Leite. The, the book was the winner of the 2006 National Book Award the for National Literature de Traducción. Well, he's a lifetime uh, member of the Philippine Historical Society, PNHS, one of the most prestigious academic Uno, societies uh, in the Philippines and the oldest in, in history. Um, we are also a general, member of the editorial advisory board of the journal editorial and has uh, edited uh, re recent issues of, of this prestigious uh, journal. He served as Visayas representative from 2014 to 2016 and 2017 to 2019 in the National Committee on in Historical the Research of the National the Commission for Culture and the Arts. Nacional and uh, function as NCCA. secretary of the uh, NSHR Executive Council. And uh, y, last but not least at all, último, uh, no he's a professor at the School of Health Science, University of the Philippines, Manila, in Palo Leite. Uh, good evening, Dr. Borrinaga, and good thank evening. you, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. We are very happy to have you with us tonight. And uh, uh, now, well, I, I give you the floor to talk us about this, uh, uh, such an interesting episode, the, the arrival, the very arrival of the expedition to the archipelago. And with this, those famous uh, graffiti, if I can say that word of graffiti, that uh, maybe the very Magellan did it, no? It's like um, when we were kids, no? I was uh, explaining to my secretary, a few days ago about this lecture and she said oh it's, it's like when we go to somewhere and we say I was here and we write our name no so well we will see really <laughs> it was like that or uh, or, or is it much more complicated well Dr. Borinaga uh, the floor is yours thank you very much indeed okay, thank you very much uh, Dr. Uh, Galvan for the generous uh, introduction uh. Uh, let me share now my slide uh, for this uh, presentation. Okay, go ahead. I think that we have already the the translation to Spanish. So, uh, okay, los, so por favor, intenten los que quieran seguirlo en español apretar en el botoncito este que hay abajo que pone interpretación con la bola del mundo y elegir el idioma español. ¿eh? Creo que ya estamos hemos resuelto el problema. Uh, please, uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry again, Dr. Borina, for these problems, for the translation. Now I okay. won't interrupt you, I promise. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Good evening uh, from the Philippines and uh, good noon in Spain. So my lecture is uh, about the Magellan Rocks on the Monhon Island in Guan, Eastern Samar. Our presentation attempts to complement the narratives of Antonio Pigafetta about uh, Humuno or Humunhan Island in the present municipality of Giwan Eastern Samar in the Philippines. 
or alternative sources beyond the Pigafetta so account are derived from ethnography, uh, linguistics, son geography, and uh, archaeology. Uh, of course, the personalities uh, are my lecturer, uh, uh, Magellan and uh, Pigafetta. Pigafetta. Now, the, this slide shows the, the route uh, followed by uh, the Magellan expedition from uh, Ladrones to Samar in March 1521. Uh, and uh, the, the, it's based on uh, a and las bases. Uh, okay. Bien. At dawn on um, en March, uh, in March 1521, they sighted Highland and eventually the uh, island of Samal, Samar, Samal, Samal, Samal 300 que, leagues uh, distance from the Ladrones late in the afternoon of that day. So that was the, that was what was written by Pigafetta and his account. Eso es que Pigafetta en su frecuente. Uh, although Pigafetta implied that the highland they saw belonged to Samar, a 20th century historian, Father Martin Noon, suggested that the highland they que la, first saw over the, high, la, the horizon were the mountains of Isla, perdón, que la horizon, some peaks eh? of which rose to three or thousand feet. De, de unos, uh, they would have seen the outlines of the lower los, elevated yes. Samar only later in the day. Eso nos cuenta Father Martin Noon. Now, uh, however, Bien. after visiting Suluan uh, for the quincentennial rights last Pero uh, fue a March 16, uh, 2021, together with the um, uh, Spanish ambassador and uh, the general from the embassy and, uh, of course, Dr. Uh, Galvan, I Galvan. noticed that the highland that the expedition first saw at dawn 500 years ago to be Mount Redondo, on the Nagat Island in Mindanao, 939 meters at uh, elevation at 3,081 feet. In contrast to Father Noon's suggestion, the highlands of Leyte could not be seen from Sunuan. Also, no high, highlands of Samar could be seen from Sunuan. Uh, this is uh, my photo of a uh, of, uh, Mount Redondo on, on the Nagat Island, and there's a circle there from Humonhon. I, I had the photo taken from uh, Suluan, but it's very vague. All right. Albo noted that after sighting land on 16 March 1521, the expedition sailed towards the northwest. And when they saw that the land, uh, Samal to Pigafita, you know, Guanto and Albo, stranded north. And there were many sh shoals near it. They took another tack to the south and came upon another small island, Suluano, or Suluan, and anchored there for the night of the same day. Now, th that's a photo of a uh, northern part of Suluan Island. Now, an incident attendant to the Suluan Anchorage landing was not mentioned by Pigafetta, but was described in two other eyewitness accounts. Albu said that they saw some canoes with riders, or two paraos, wrote the Genoese pilot, which fled when crew members tried to approach them. Now, Pigafetta wrote that the following day, 17 March 1521, Magellan desired to land on another island, which was uninhabited and lay to the right of Samar, in order to be more secure and to get water and to have some rest. He had two tents set up on the shore for the sick and had a sow killed for them. The island they landed in was called the Umuno or Humunhon at present. Now, uh, Pigafetta drew a map, uh, the first map of the Philippines, and I present here uh, two maps, uh, one from the Ambrosiana edition and the other is from a French, uh, from a French uh, translation. Uh, uh, I called, I labeled this as the original archipelago of San La Lazaro, which was named on his feast day on 17 March, the landing at Humonhon. Now, uh, if you notice, uh, the French uh, map, uh, out of four maps uh, in, in different editions, uh, in different uh, 
in different versions, uh, only one French map showed the reef to the west of Suluan Island. The, uh, the other three maps did not have that, uh, but here it, it shows. You know. Now, uh, here's the map of uh, Suluan Island and Humunhon Island uh, in the 1899 map of the Philippines. And uh, here is a photo of Humunhon Island uh, that I took from uh, uh, Suluan uh, last March. Now, although the island they landed was called Umuno, they they also called it Aquada de Libon de Señale, the watering place of good signs, because they found two springs there of the clearest water as well as the first signs of gold that they found in that geography. In the map that Pigafetta drew of the area, only Omono had two labels. The gold items they saw were perhaps worn by the natives they met, uh, band steel, golden teeth, gold omelets, gold earrings, gold ornaments on their daggers, knives, and spears, etc. Now, uh, I took this photo of the approximate landing area where they landed uh, in Humunhon Island on March 17, 1521. This is the beach area here where they perhaps uh, installed their tents. On the afternoon of Monday, 18 March 1521, the expedition members saw a boat coming towards them with nine men in it. Magellan ordered that no one should move or say a word without his permission. Once these men had landed on the beach, their leader went immediately to the captain general and showed signs of joy of the foreigners' arrival. Five of the most elaborately tattooed among them remained on shore while the rest went to fetch the others were still fishing until all they all came. Now there's uh, an artwork uh, done by uh, Derek McCauley to represent the meeting in uh, on Monhon Island between the Magellan's group and the uh, natives. Uh, and uh, this is based on uh, the sub-theme of the Quincentennial, which is humanity in Humunhon, and the other part of the theme was uh, victory in Mactan. Now, when Magellan saw the natives were reasonable men, he ordered food to be set before them and gave them red caps, mirrors, combs, bells, ivory, bocassin, and other things. In return for the captain's courtesy, the natives presented fish, a jar of palm wine, which they called raka, figs more than one palm long, bananas, and others, and other which were similar and delicate, and two coconuts. Now, the natives became very familiar with the members of the expedition, and the latter took great pleasure with them because they were pleasant and conversable. The language translations were apparently provided by Enrique de Malaca, Magellan's servant and the interpreter. The natives told the foreigners many things, including their names and the identities of some of the islands that could be seen from that place. They said their island is called Suluan and that it was not very large. Now that's a photo of uh, coconut trees, which I took uh, in Limasawa where later, the Magellan expedition visited. Now, in early one third of his Omono narrative, Pigafetta described the coconut, the fruit, and the tree. Just as we have bread, wine, oil, and milk, so those people get everything from that tree. He wrote about this multi use, multi use plant. He first described how wine would be tapped from the tree, then he described the fruit, its parts and contents, as well as the process of extracting oil, vinegar, and milk from the fruit. Now, uh, Pigafetta's lengthy na coconut narrative and mentioned that the natives of reasonable men suggest a display of local hospitality that perhaps preceded the Spanish offer of food and gifts. We have a uh, uh, term in, uh, in Visayas, Panglamao, which is basically a picnic uh, in the groups, coconut groups, to pick young coconuts, to drink its water and uh, eat its soft meat. 
this must have been ordered by the foremost chief to his followers soon after the pleasantries were exchanged with Magellan. Panglamao is still being practiced in many remote rural areas when visitors come around. After the native chiefs departed and promised to return in five days, they must have left behind at least three people, perhaps two slaves and a supervising uh, Timawa to look after the needs of their Spanish visitors. That's very Filipino. You leave somebody who can, uh, who can be of help. These natives not mentioned by Pigafetta must have been his respondents and demonstrators in showing him everything about the coconut and its uses, for which Enrique de Malaca served as translator. They must have also been his informants about the names of the islands in the vicinity and other details that they recorded. The same natives who were left behind must have also served as climbers of the tall trees to tap the tuba wine and to pick the exact young coconut fruits which Water Magellan gave from his own hand every morning to the recuperating sick members of his crew. Now the name is Umuno or Umunon. A place name that Pigafetta never bothered to explain was Umuno, written as Umunhon by the next generation of Spaniards. An Italian or Spanish uh, reading these two names would skip the letter H and this would sound as Umuno or Umunon. What does the word with the sound mean in the Visayan language? Now, Umu is uh, the abandoned beehive. The island's name has not yet been adequately explained in the literature, but its root word is Umu, a now forgotten Visayan word for the honeyless hive or the abandoned hive of the honeybee. In ancient times, uh, Umu was a good fuel for torches and was also used for making candles. During the Spanish regime, Umu would be processed into beeswax and this product would be used to pay one's tribute to the government instead of gas or some other product. And that's a photo of the bees and their beeswax. Now, the name that is properly pronounced as Umunon means that this island abounded in Omo, Omo honeycombs. Although Pigafita did not write this in his chronicle, we can presume that Magellan's men, guided by the Suluan natives who attended to their needs, also went around the island to gather Omo from the forests, which they dried and used as fuel for their torches. It is possible that they, they experienced lighted nights in their galleons here in Omonon for the first time after more than three months of dark nights while sailing across the Pacific Ocean. Uh, that's a photo that I got from the internet of the, a honeybee with the bees. Uh, in many instances, the beehives in the wild are still full of bees and not yet abandoned. Thus, the gatherers would have to build a fire and smoke the bees out of their hives. In the process, they would gather both the beehive and the honey contained in it. Honey gathered from the forest must have also been consumed by the sick men of the Magellan expedition. It is rich in vitamin C, which at the time was not yet known as a cure for scurvy. It would seem that honey, more than coconut water, helped in the recovery of the sick men from their scurvy. Now on Friday at noon, 22 March 1521, the natives came back. As they had promised, uh, they came in two boats with coconuts, sweet oranges, a jar of palm wine, and a cup, as if to show that there were fouls in the geography. They showed signs of great pleasure in of, of seeing the members of the expedition who purchased all the items that they bought. The senior among the natives was an old man who was tattooed. He wore two gold earrings in the ears, and the others had many Gold, gold armlets on their arms and kerchiefs around their head. Now, in the afternoon of uh, Holy Monday, 25 March 1521, the expedition members had returned to their ships and were at the point of weighing anchor. Pigafetta went to the side, side of the ship to fish, slipped and fell to the sea. Fortunately, he was rescued, rescued by a small boat. 
before he, drown, he would have drowned. That same day, the Magellan expedition ended its Sumunon episode and shaped its course towards the west-southwest between four islands of Sinalo, Yunangan, Ibuson, and Abarien. Now, uh, the islands of the archipelago as labeled, labeled by uh, uh, Pigafetta are still there now. Of course, different spelling, spellings. Uh, Suluan, Sinalo, perhaps uh, mishearing or mistranscription of the Nagat. Uh, where I have now theorized that they saw the, the peak of the mountain uh, from the ocean. Then Hibuson, Hyunangan, and Hunungan was a place for stopover. Then Humono, and there which uh, is Aquada de Lisbon de Senale. Then Abarien and uh, Samar. Now, the Pigafita, Pigafita account provides the basic historical record uh, of the arrival of the Magellan expedition in, in our islands in 1521. This was virtually the only source of detailed published evidence, but in Humonhon, they also have archaeological evidence that provides independent proofs that Magellan and his men had really been there. This came in the form of names carved on rocks. Now, the foremost evidence was the inscription Ferns of Magalhaes, uh, carved on the surface of a rock beside a stream in the Cantilado area of Monhon. Except for the S in the first word, the texts approximate the name of Magellan in Portuguese, Fernão Magalhaes. The inscribed rock was first discovered in 1932 by Seferino Baginon, a woodcutter and rattan gatherer from Barangay Colasi which then included the area of Cantilado and Barangay Pagbabangna. Now, this is a photo of uh, the Magellan's rock after it was discovered in 1932. I don't know who is this figure. Perhaps this is the author of the article that was published in the Philippines Free Press uh, at the time in 1932. So the... the, the uh, there is the inscription there, Fernso Magalhaes, and uh, what what always uh, what always uh, uh, struck me about uh, at least two stones there with so where the underline is an underline here. Now on September 3, 1932, the Philippines Free Press published an article by Alberto Abileda titled "Is History Wrong." The author presented the Magellan rock with the accompanying photo. However, he also mentioned a rock allegedly inscribed with the date March 14, 1521, 1521, which he claimed might have been the date of the Magellan landing in Humunhon. But no photo of this rock was published in the article. The presented date in the article became the focus of debate among historians and intelligentsia in Manila in the succeeding years. Now, in July 1934, uh, E.R. Senior Manuel published an article in the Philippine magazine titled The Homonon Rocks. He questioned the auth authenticity of the rocks, especially the one with the alleged March 14, uh, 1521 date. He argued using other primary sources as reference that the Magellan landing in Homonon was in fact on March 17, 1521. Now, the following month, uh, August uh, 1934, Percy Hill also published an article in Philippine magazine titled, I have heard to unpublished document on the landing of Magellan in Homonhon. Hill claimed to have possession of a primary document which showed that the Magellan expedition left Canoyas, uh, Ladrones, on March 7, 1521, apparently to fit the arrival date of March 14, 1521, allegedly inscribed on a homonon rock as claimed in the Philippines Free Press article in 1932. The Hill article uh, also mentioned a mass on land and the planting of a cross on the Monhon allegedly on March 19, 1521. That's a scanned copy of the first page of the Hill article in Philippine magazine. The Hill article was given credence by a number of authors for decades since its publication. However, I had refuted uh, 
the Hill document in May, Humanon paper published in 2019, arguing that its source was in fact Jose Marco, the famous hoaxer of history documents uh, in, in the Philippines, including the Code of Kalanchao, that were exposed and refuted by historian Dr. William Henry Scott in the 1960s. Anyway, in uh, 1952, the Philippine Historical Committee installed a bronze marker in the Cantilado area in a ceremony attended by then Summer Governor de Corozo Rosales. Its cement monument overlooked Magellan's Rock, my term for the rock with the Ferns of Magalaya's inscription. The last known photo of the rock and the marker still intact was taken with a group of excursionists around 1968. So this was the last known photo uh, of uh, the Magellan's rock with the historical marker. Now, in the early 1970s, uh, the, the marker was destroyed and it had disappeared and uh, part of the rock was, was covered up. And so uh, nobody could find that artifact again. Now, uh, somehow in, uh, in 2000, uh, I, I got interested uh, in the Magellan's Rock and I wrote an article about this, uh, in, which was given a uh, full page uh, treatment in the Philippine Daily Inquirer, March 16, 2000. And uh, the uh, title was Whatever Happened to Magellan's Rock. Actually, my reference was. Uh, a monograph published by uh, Dr. Jean Eves Blot, uh, a Portuguese uh, researcher uh, who had actually visited uh, Umonhon uh, four times uh, to find archaeological evidence of the Magellan expedition. And uh, he tried to find uh, yeah, the Magellan's rock, but he could not find it. He could not even find the uh, mm, he could not even find the marker and uh, he only found other rocks there with uh, newer newer uh, newer inscriptions anyway the book was given to me by father late father peter Scruz, who had also written about history of, of uh, the magellan expedition in the philippines Anyway, for after 15 uh, years uh, since the publication of uh, my article, I, I, I thought that uh, the question I raised in the, in the article would not be answered. But sometime in 2016, I was approached by uh, Mr. Al Sid, uh, who represented the National Historical Commission of the Philippines at the National Committee on Historical Research of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Uh, after uh, one of our meetings, he asked me if I could uh, help facilitate so that a replacement marker could be installed on Humunhon, the one that I said uh, disappeared in the early 1970s. And then sometime in the middle of 2017, a uh, former student of mine uh, from Humunhon, uh, Ms. Hinesa, visited me in school and asked me what he could do for her home island. I suggested that she could make representation with the local officials of Giwan so that the replacement marker from the NHCP could be installed. And this is what she did. In October 17, then may, the mayor of uh, Giwan went to the NHCP and signed the conforming document for the installation of the replacement marker. Now, after the conforming signing at the NHCP, I requested my former student to visit the Magallanes Shrine in the Cantilado area of Umunhon and search for traces of the Magellan's rock. If it can still be found using old photos that I provided her, which are found in, uh, in uh, Dr. Blood's uh, monograph. She failed to find the Magellan's rock during her first visit, but she fortunately sent me a photo of another rock inscription that I had since labeled as Magellan Sun's rock. This was a plain case of serendipity and pure chance. Uh, she sent me this photo and uh, it seems uh, the, the people who found this in uh, 1932 thought that this was a date. 
and this must have been the the inscription that was mistaken for a date well uh, what was published in 1932 was march 14 but uh, this really looks like uh, march uh, 3 no? Mar marzo 3 no? it suddenly became clear to me that the second line uh, was uh, rabo c was the abbreviation of the name of cristobal cristobal ravello Rebello in some uh, literature, who was believed to be Magellan's illegitimate son and constant companion during the voyage, and who died with him in the Battle of Mactan on 27 April 1521. As for MA initials in the first line, the name might have belonged to Martin de Ayamonte, a common seaman in the ship Victoria. Now, I said that it was pure serendipity that I got this picture. Because uh, late, I was sent uh, another photo later when the rock was uh, cleared, clean, cleared up and uh, it had already contained uh, new inscriptions, uh, new, new vandalized, new vandalisms that in fact uh, made it appear that the second line was uh, was Calbayog. And uh, this was uh, one one rock that was seen and recorded by uh, Dr. Blot in the early 1990s. If I had seen this one instead of the first photo, I would not have uh, come to the conclusion that this was uh, the Magellan Sun's rock and that, that this was the, the inscription that was mistaken for a date in 1932. Anyway, after 17 years of being deemed lost, my former student successfully located the original Magellan's rock during a second visit. Uh, seriously vandalized and mechanically cracked up in several places, presumably by treasure hunters, but still with the traces of the Ferns of Magellan's inscription. The rediscovery happened on uh, 24 January 2018 after hired laborers had cleared up and washed the sack rock soil of soil and debris that had accumulated and virtually covered it through the decades. So I actually uh, asked my students, so why, why, why don't you have those rocks, uh, uh, the, have the soil removed like, and make it appear like what had appeared in the 1932 photo. And this was what, uh, what came out and I was able to to find this uh, inscription. That's the inscription uh, as it looks at present, uh, at least in, uh, in 2018 when this was uh, found. Okay, with the discovery of the Magellan's rock, the next business was oh, to uh, put up the base that would be used for the display for displaying the Magellan's marker. Now the the person tasked by the mayor to do that was the village chief, and this was what he he had uh, built. Uh, this one is supposed to contain the the the, the replacement marker. What happened was that uh, he actually covered the original Magellan's rock with soil again and some cement. And uh, what was uh, what was uh, visible at the back is actually the inscription of what I have called the Magellan, Magellan Sun's rock. And so I advised the, uh, the uh, NHCP not to ever use this uh, because because they had in fact covered the original rock, which is actually the more important, uh, the, the more important uh, archaeological evidence of the presence of the Magellan expedition. Okay, in uh, March uh, 17, uh, 2021, I was in, uh, I went to Humonhona again with uh, Dr. Galvan, the, people from the Spanish embassy. And I had my photograph with this uh, on, uh, on the left side of the photo. 
is the inscription that I called the Magellan Sans Rock. And the Magellan's Rock with Fernso Magalai's inscription is here somewhere on the, the right, already covered with cement and, uh, and uh, soil. Uh, fortunately, the, the National Historical Commission of the Philippines has now allocated money so that uh, to remove the cement portion there and to actually clean up uh, all the rocks here so that uh, hopefully we future uh, scholars uh, and uh, researchers can uh, find more evidence of uh, inscriptions of the Portuguese that goes back to the Magellan expedition. Uh, of course, uh, during that uh, quincentennial uh, event in Homon Hon, March 17, 1521, uh, the ambassador was there and uh, delivered his uh, speech uh, on behalf of the um, Spanish government. So that's all my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Borinaga, for this uh, very interesting uh, communication on uh, on the very beginning of the uh, path of the expedition by from through the Philippines, and uh, with these uh, mysterious inscriptions um, that uh, had really a uh, well uh, good luck and bad luck. No, it, it was as you mentioned a serendipity to find the second rock. But actually, the, the episode of the Magellan rock buried by cement, uh, well, it's, it's a shame. But hopefully, as you mentioned, it will be uh, discovered again. No, I, I think there are some uh, activity planned for the uh, maybe for the Philippine Spanish National Day there again in G1. Actually, it's a marker yeah. that uh, will uh, marker in Spanish that the Spanish embassy will uh, install there no so i'm okay. crossing my finger to be able to be back there in in g1 okay. i believe we will be in g1 and hopefully <laughs> we will have an extension and who knows maybe there are two ceremonies no the marker in spanish in g1 and then okay, the yes. discovery again of the magellan rock that would be that would be great well um uh, now we open the floor to the to the public so okay. you can use, uh, everyone can use the, the chat or the uh, PNR button to make the questions uh, to Dr. Borinaga. But anyhow, uh, I will uh, pass to panelists, uh, to uh, our friends that follow the, the sessions of uh, Tertulias Magallanicas every, every other Saturday. So uh, I say for those that are following us for the first time, that uh, these uh, talks um, started uh, when the pandemic started, more or less, a group of, of uh, persons interested in history got together from Spain, from the Philippines, from Mexico, uh, from Portugal, and uh, we got together every other Saturday for one year and a half, and now we continue. Uh, it's the first Saturday of, of every month that we invite some authority, as Dr. Borinaga, uh, to uh, talk us about episodes uh, of this um, fantastic uh, expedition um, started by Magellan and completed by Elcano that uh, completed the, the first circumnavigation. Um, so uh, please, uh, you can raise your hands if, if you like. And if you like also, I will give the opportunity to, to all of you um, that are following us to uh, make the question even to uh, uh, to have your screen open. Um, our friend Elisa from uh, from Santander has raised her hand. It's a usual uh, moment of the tertulias when when uh, Elisa Elisa. Uh, talks. Elisa, eh, I, eh, estás ahora como panelista, con lo cual podrías ya. Eh, también he de decir que eh, 
Los eh, eh, españoles, si queréis hacer la pregunta en español, y eh, Chaco Molina traducirá al inglés. So, if you hear Mom Melissa speaking in Spanish, for you that don't speak yet, that don't understand yet Spanish, you should come to Instituto Cervantes, but then you can uh, choose the button of English because the, those questions in Spanish will, will be translated into English. Eh, Elisa, buenas tardes aquí en Filipinas. Buenas tardes, bu buenos mediodías aquí en España. Uh, Profesor Borinaga, thank you very much for your information. Uh, please, could I include, may I include this information in a publication I am just about to, to, to edit, to edit, sorry, my English is getting wrong. Could I use your information? Sure, sure. Yes, yes, thank you very much. I will. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I have to say that this is an article by uh, Dr. Borinaga that has been published. For those interested, um, uh, we, can, we can send you. Uh, Dr. Borinaga uh, was so generous. He shared with me uh, last year. So I'm pretty sure that Dr. Borinaga will be very happy to share this article yeah. with those interested as, mm -hmm. as Elisa. Thank although you. I added, I, although I added new new insights in uh, in, uh, in 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 today's le lecture based on what we had seen in uh, Sulu and and Homonhon uh, last uh, March. There Thank you. Some addition. Okay, uh, we 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 have uh, for this uh, tertulia Magallanica. Uh, we have an archive that is uh, um, run by uh, Mr. Paco Moreno. And so for those interested in some of the topics that uh, were uh, explained in this uh, two years uh, two years before, you can also come to us uh, to give you, because uh, it's, it's a lot of information about the expedition and many aspects, uh, the, the travel itself, but many things that happen uh, in the Philippines, in Guam, in the Marianas, in the kitchen, uh, the food they had, I mean, many aspects that we have collected. So for those interested, they, they can uh, come to us and uh, we can show you what uh, the other material that we have in this uh, cloud uh, that uh, Mr. Moreno uh, is managing. Well, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Pedro Bonet, nuestro amigo eh, Pedro Bonet, el musicólogo, vamos a darle la oportunidad también de aparecer en pantalla. Eh, Pedro, buenos días allí en España. Eh, vamos a ver si puede ya hablar. Yes. Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, you listen to me? Yes, yes, yeah, I can yes. hear you. No, just a commentary. Like, uh, well, Portuguese no, used to bring uh, stones in their boats to uh, put markers no, in the places they made in uh, exploration. So I think by these rocks, we see that uh, we Spanish expeditions, I, I'm uh, talking from Madrid, we didn't uh, bring stones along in the boat, so we mark in the rocks uh, directly, no? just was, uh, uh, if this uh, makes some uh, meaning uh, for you about the Portuguese stones, or the Magallanes expedition inscriptions. Uh, yeah. No, no, no more by, by me about this. Just the remark that uh, uh, Portuguese, uh, uh, let's say, uh, leave uh, official stones. No. Uh, uh, meanwhile, they were going Africa to the south in their expeditions uh, till arriving to Orient, no? So we have been here, we passed here. Well, no more commentary by me. Okay. Uh, would yes, you uh, say something about this? Yeah, because I, I, I have also, because uh, in, in uh, Dr. Blot's uh, uh, article, he mentioned actually the, the one, the Ilala inscriptions in the, up in the Congo River, 
the, the, at least the oldest Portuguese uh, inscriptions known, and uh, at, at least uh, the one the the second uh, that can be established to be Portuguese is it was in Samar. There was a, actually a controversy about the authenticity of the inscription because they thought that well, if it was written as Magellan in English or Magallanes in uh, in uh, in Spanish, that would have the the the, the, authentic, in the the suspicion would have been uh, would would have been uh, okay, but the the inscription was written in Portuguese, and so it could have only been done by Portuguese. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I. I would like to, to ask to some of our friends that are following us, historians that have researched, if uh, they have any, any idea in any other source, written source or oral source, whatever, uh, mention about these inscriptions. If um, anyone uh, knew uh, about that before this, uh, discovery in, in the Philippines, in any of the, um, of the diaries or reports? Uh, I mean, if anyone uh, heard before about these inscriptions. Uh, well, maybe in the meantime that uh, some of our friends can make a question. Uh, Dr. Borrinaga, um, actually, did you uh, find anything uh, uh, or, or any oral, something interesting also is about the oral sources, no? Uh, what the people of the island, what the people of Homohon, the, the elderly people uh, talk about that? There's some story related to the rocks, some legend. Um, I don't know well, what you um, about that. Well, uh, my, my son is actually looking into the... Well, well, what was known was that uh, Humonhon was uh, a sacred island. And uh, it, was, uh, it was described as, uh, as such by... Uh, it, is, it is the home of, uh, of a native uh, mythical god uh, that, that's, that's almost like uh, the one in, in Roman mythology... Uh, uh, Zeus or something like that. Um, uh, the god of uh, there's a native god, Sumakapatag, somebody who can flatten, uh, uh, and uh, it, it, it had no, no residence until Father Alcina wrote about it in the 1668. People would not, would not uh, uh, reside in that island because. Uh, well, it, it's the home of, uh, of a very vengeful native god, uh, uh, native deity. That, but uh, they, 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 they go there, uh, natives go there for, for to, to offer uh, uh, offerings uh, for, for, for their, uh, uh, for the, for the, for this uh, nat native deities. Yeah. Well, I can imagine also that since it's a very remote island, very remote, no? Because uh, even uh, you can see Dr. Borrinaga, uh, well, he, he is from Leyte. He knows, of course, <laughs> very well the, the main islands, uh, Leyte and Samar. And even you didn't have the opportunity uh, to go there often, Diva, to make a, yes, a yes, thorough yes. research. That was also my first time to go to Homunhon last March. Oh, really? <laughs> like myself? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, <so> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that means that it's very, very complicated uh, to get there. I can, you can trust us, Diva, eh, because <laughs> we had a three hours boat in a small boat yeah. in the Banca getting there. It uh, was uh, or an adventure, no? So uh, that's why I think it would be interesting actually to, to, to have a field uh, research because uh, I'm pretty sure that if uh, some uh, scholars that really know how to make the inquiry, know how to ask, eh, and uh, you, you can probably get a lot of information. Some of you, 
uh, historians are there for a number of years, uh, asking the people, uh, bringing up this conversation, etc. And I'm pretty sure that there uh, will be uh, something, no? That that will be to that is to discover, no? About this um, situation. No? Well, okay, Benir No Bueno, also our friend from from Bilbao, no? Um, is también ha levantado la mano. Benigno, adelante, por favor. No tengo nada. I grew up in the Philippines. A ver, Beni, no te vemos, te oímos, sí. A ver, sí, ahora. Acá. I grew up, no sé por nada. I grew up in the Philippines, en enero, and the baptismal sponsor of my brother, who was a Spaniard also from the same province as my father in Santander. And uh, as a child, uh, when he visited, he would visit us. And as a child, I do remember he and my father and my mother talking about the signs that Magellan had, and, well, and the expedition had been, uh, because Bijan, my father's friend, actually lived for many years in Zuan. Now, he said that many of the signs were destroyed because, as you know, that part of the country is buffeted by the typhoons. Yes, so that yes. was his explanation why there was very little uh, remains of the visit or, or of the landing, no? of that very important historical event. Anyway, thank you very much because it has brought me a great pleasure to and I have learned as well. I have learned as well. Thank you again, Dr. Valinara. Gracias. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Eh, muchas gracias, eh, Benigno Bueno. Eh, yeah, actually, uh, Mr. Bueno, he has lived in the Philippines. Uh, he has a lot of family memories, as, as he has uh, mentioned to us. And he has written a book, it's a, a, a novel. Uh, on this, uh, well, um, it's a fiction history, but with a lot of connection to real life, no? Of uh, characters that we are living in the Philippines in hard times, no? So that is, uh, that is a book that uh, he was so generous to give us to Instituto. So you can uh, come to the library. We are going to open the library again after almost two years closed because of the pandemic. And you uh, will have the opportunity uh, to read this book uh, that uh, belongs to, a, let's say, a series of books of, of, of people uh, like Mr. Bueno that uh, are Spanish, live now in Spain, but uh, have a strong connection with the Philippines, uh, family connection from several, several generations ago, and even uh, some of them, uh, like him, that even has lived in the Philippines for quite some time. No? And it's true, it's true, I, I had forgotten that one of the characters, of the main characters, a living you one of your novel. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's very much connected to the, to the, to the lecture today, no? Uh, well, yes. um, okay. Uh, well, I don't know why, for some reason, Dr. Adelaida Sagarra uh, is on a screen. Maybe it was my mistake when I wanted uh, to promote uh, Benigno Bueno as panelist, but they say that uh, there is no mistakes, that mistakes don't exist. So I'm sorry, Adelaida, but since you are there, uh, well, I don't want to, to force you to, to come up, but I would like to, to know your, your opinion and to congratulate you also for the interventions that, uh, that you have had in some uh, documentaries uh, the very successful in Spain about the history of Spain. And we are very proud, the people of the Tertulia Magalli El Canicas, that uh, you are there and uh, with your witness, uh, with all your, your, your knowledge of the history of, of Spain. Well, Adelaida, if you like, only if you like, uh, you have uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Javier. 
Eh, yo siento, pero entre mi sabiduría y conocimiento no, no está el del inglés, con lo cual voy a hablar en español, ya me perdonarán. Muchísimas gracias al doctor Borrinaga. La verdad es que hay tantos campos de investigación científica e histórica que realmente eh, es una riqueza impresionante, ¿no? Y ahora escuchándoles hablar, antes preguntabas, Javier, si había testimonios documentales o eh, pruebas históricas, vamos a decir así, de cuestiones similares. Y me he acordado de que hace poco, repasando los cronistas, sí que he leído que, por ejemplo, Diego de Lepe, en su viaje de reconocimiento por las costas de Brasil, hizo algunas inscripciones en los árboles. Obviamente esos árboles no se han conservado, pero, pero sí que los cronistas... Eh, remarcan esta idea, ¿no? Los descubridores, donde van, de alguna forma, tienen, por un lado, esa oficialidad, toman posesión o fundan una ciudad, etcétera, pero por otro, siempre está como la idea de dejar una constancia ya individual, personal, que no deja de ser una manera como de pasar a la historia. Entonces, eh, bueno, esto es lo que yo más o menos podría decir. Eh, sí, podría preguntar al doctor Borrinaga si tiene noticia o proyecto de seguir buscando eh, algunas piedras similares en otros lugares donde los españoles tocaron tierra en las Filipinas. Y nada, muchas gracias. Gracias, gracias, muchas gracias Adelaida. And uh, this question, if uh, do you expect to find more rocks? <laughs> I, I, I think so. I think so. If, 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 if those rocks are just uh, be cleaned up, uh, I, I think there are, there are other inscriptions because these are, these are now covered with uh, roots of trees and uh, things like that. So that, that's in fact my, my suggestion to basically those rocks to, to be clear, cleared up for future studies. Well, it's another point that uh, might be well, Controversial, well, it's controversial in the Philippines. Where was the first mass, mass, the first mass held this uh, uh, polemic between Butuan and Limasawa? And uh, yeah, but uh, that's true. And uh, when we were there in Homo Hon, uh, it, uh, he was with us, uh, the charge d'affaires of the po uh, Polish embassy. Because also in this Homo Hon Island, it's very small island, but there was a missionary, a Polish missionary. And so uh, he was there with some other people from the Polish embassy. And he was telling to us, for sure, the first mass was told here. Because, uh, yeah, the fleet was more than a week. And it's pretty sure that they have uh, mass, you know, they had mass uh, at least one day, at least on Sunday, you know. And uh, yeah, even, uh, well, that has been, um, has been written. Of course, it's very logical. I didn't know about this note that you passed in the newspaper. The point is that, well, there were no Filipinos, no? That's the, that's the, that's the point. But our friends of Limasawa can, be, uh, can breathe <laughs> because, uh, uh, yeah, it's another kind of, of, of mass, no? But uh, yeah, I think that uh, must be very clear that the very, very first mass held in Filipino soil or Filipino waters was in Homo Hon. And that's something that we should say, <laughs> we should say, Dr. Borrinaga, to our friend, the mayor of Giwan. Maybe she can run also for this, uh, uh, <laughs> this competition. No? Where, where was the first mass held? What do you think about that? Well, well uh, of course, uh, I defended actually the Limasawa claim versus uh, Botuan. <laughs> as the one. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't even presume that uh, a mass was held on the boat at dawn of uh, soon after they sighted uh, Highland uh, on the 16th March uh, 1521. The mass was held on the boat in the, still in the ocean whilst they were still on the way to to Samar. Yeah. Yeah, because actually they didn't, of course, they, 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 there was not a harbor, it's not a harbor today. Yeah. So they entered somewhere near the, the coast, but actually they didn't disembark a full group 
and they didn't camp in the island. You know? So they were, they come back to sleep at the, at the boats. You... Yeah, on, on March 16, they, they just, uh, they just anchored off, off the reef in Soloan, mm -hmm. off the reef in Soloan, and then the next day they, they proceeded to Humonhon, where they finally landed, 17. Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, I don't see any hand raised, but I can help uh, but asking our friend Tomas Mazón, uh, in the same way that I said to with Adelaida, only Tomas, only if you want. Uh, actually, uh, you gave us uh, a talk, one of the first talks of this series on the past of the expedition through the Philippines. And uh, well, I would like, I would love to, to know your opinion uh, about uh, these rocks and uh, a little bit uh, the same question that I did before, no? and that I did like the answer about some inscriptions on trees or whatever that uh, you could read about. Eh, bueno, no te quiero poner en ningún compromiso, Tomás, pero estás ya tan acostumbrado. Eh, bueno, yo te asciendo a panelista y... And very sorry about that, but I know that you will excuse me. Sí. Sí, a ver, creo que se me ve y oye ahora, ¿no? Perfecto, perfecto. <risa> bueno, eh, muchas gracias, Javier, sí, claro, y enhorabuena por la exposición. Que me ha gustado mucho atenderla porque es un tema además del que yo eh, fui conocedor a través de, de Javier precisamente, conocía la existencia de esto y Javier me, me envió muy amablemente el artículo en el, en el que se hablaba de ello. ¿no? Eh, a ver, a mí me parece totalmente, como decía la profesora de la Ida Zagarra, ¿no? No, no, yo no conozco testimonios documentados en los que los marinos fueran dejando rastro suyo, así con esta idea, ¿no? Como de, de pretender dejar algo para que quedara la poster, para la posteridad, ¿no? Pero me parece algo absolutamente razonable, lógico y humano. Y, y en este sentido yo lo único, lo, desconozco si se ha hecho, sería... Quizá mi pregunta, ¿no? Si se ha hecho algún tipo de análisis paleográfico o se ha mirado eh, la posibilidad de, de, de que la letra utilizada en esos grabados mmm, pudiera corresponder a, a, a la que pudieran ellos tener, ¿no? Que más o menos es conocida por, por los escritos de la época. Eh, a ver, es también... Tampoco creo que pudiera ser nada concluyente eso, muy difícilmente concluyente en el sentido de que grabar, escribir en piedra, evidentemente no, no es lo mismo que escribir en papel ¿no? y con, la, con el tipo de letra que se usaba entonces tan, tan redondeado. ¿no? Pero creo que a lo mejor podría aportar algo, un análisis de ese tipo que desconozco si se ha hecho o no. Eh, esa sería mi cuestión. Y, y luego, por otro lado, pues bueno, lo de, lo de dejar allí grabado que correspondiera con aquel lugar, que todo eso tiene, tiene muchos puntos para hacer algo veraz, ¿no? O sea, podría, pod corresponde, parece que todo lleva a pensar que eso puede ser cierto, ¿verdad? O sea, no hay nada en lo que conocemos de la historia que nos lleve a pensar lo contrario o a poder desmentirlo. Al contrario, ¿no? Eh, todo parece que nos lleva a que puede ser que sí, a, a confirmar que eso pudiera ser cierto. Pero eh, el hecho de poder afirmarlo ya es otra cuestión. Y, y no sé, a lo mejor ese tema de la paleografía podría arrojar algo de luz o de conozco. Muchas, eh, muchas gracias, Tomás. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I think it's very interesting, no? This 
this issue to make this uh, this analysis. Uh, uh, yeah, what do you think, Dr. Borinaga? Uh, do you have an idea that if, if anyone has made any comparison with the writings from that period, etc.? Well, I, I, I only had this uh, artifacts, and, and of, of course, I, I saw the Ilala inscriptions in the Congo. And that was at least that was in Africa, but this one in uh, in the Philippines. Uh, that uh, uh, it 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 would be interesting to basically locate some other inscriptions. So uh, what uh, what actually uh, made me conclude that this Portuguese? Uh, what I noticed early on from the old photos was uh, what was that the Fernsumagalai's inscription had an underline, basically inscribed underline. And also the Magellan Sands rock had an underline, whereas the new 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 vandalisms, uh, basically by natives, uh, Philippines natives, did not have this these underlines. Okay, Elisa uh, raised her hand. See, ¿Sí? mira, yo solamente quería aportar. Pero te, no me queda más remedio que hablar de memoria. Claro que en la Araucana sí se me... Eh, es aportar a lo que dijo Tomás Mazón sobre eh, cosas grabadas puntualmente. En la Araucana sí se menciona que cuando Alonso de Ercilla eh, 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 habla de ello, que sí que tallaron, mmm, si no ellos... Alguien que, les, que fue después de, del descubrimiento del estrecho, tallaron fechas y nombres en árboles, que tampoco existirán, evidentemente, pero si ya lo escribe 30 o 40 años después, entonces estarían los árboles para poder el opinar cuando él dice Magallanes, señor, fue el primer hombre que cruzando este camino puso nombre, algo así. Mm, él volvió por el desaguadero, como él dice, y sí que ya no sé si fue él o encontró fechas y datos en algún árbol. Y me lo voy a tener que volver a leer la araucana, me habéis fastidiado, <ríe> porque estoy viendo otras. Pero a mí esto me encanta, porque todos, en el fondo, todos queremos dejar algo detrás aunque nos caigamos por el camino. Es una, yo creo que con letra redondeada o, o a golpe de tajos con una navaja, es mucho más fácil un árbol que unas piedras, ¿eh? por descontado. Pero vamos. Que ojalá fuera verdad, que a mí me parece muy bonito lo de estas piedras. Gracias. Muy bien, eh, gracias a ti Elisa, como siempre, por tus eh, comentarios tan oportunos y tan filosóficos también en este caso, ¿no? aparte de, aparte de históricos. ¿no? Eh, uh, well, uh, I don't see any hand raised. Is uh, your last opportunity? <laughs> yeah, uh, then uh, Dr. Borinaga, I give you the, the floor to, to end this uh, session. Uh, I thank you very much again for being with us and for uh, shedding light uh, about this uh, interesting episode that is not finished. Eh? We, we yeah. hope uh, to have updates about what's going on in the next future. Uh, so, and now it's also uh, the opportunity, uh, we are happy to put you in contact with our friends, historians, and the uh, researchers on this part of the history. And um, well, I hope that maybe you will have the opportunity in the future to tackle some project together. That's the other goal of Instituto Cervantes, uh, to put together uh, scholars from, from both countries. So, uh, Dr. Borinaga, do you do you want to, to add anything to, to our session tonight? You have you have the, the floor. Thank you very much for uh, attending to my lecture today. Uh, it, it has been also a great uh, opportunity for me to uh, to basically look uh, into this part of our history because uh, we we are, at least in the Philippines now we are also encouraged to look at our historical experience uh, using the, the Magellan Expedition as reference, to look at our own historical experience from our perspective, but of course using uh, 
the documents that have been accumulated from those years. It's, it's now a matter of perspective. That we, we would have to look at our experience now, not from the European perspective, but from a purely Filipino perspective. And that, that, that's why I, I, I put a lot of uh, Filipino, uh, Filipino slant and perspective during this lecture, uh, including uh, language. Uh, language and some uh, some of the way we we deal with visitors something like that i i included that in uh, in lecture so thank you very much for for attending this one well thank you very much dr borinaga uh, yes you and uh, dr gerona he, he was with us also mm -hmm. and uh, in a, in a very memor memorable session with uh, Tomas Mazón, no? that, that we uh, we had in the format of uh, of a combat, no? of a boxing combat, Mag Magellan versus Elcano, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's very important. How Filipino scholars are more and more uh, interested in in this uh, part of the of the history, and uh, bringing up as yourself uh, a very very important. Uh, research and, and, and documents and, and things that um, actually uh, enrich very much uh, the, the appreciation of this part of the history and especially for Filipinos because it's the, the history of the, of the Philippines, this uh, very important episode. Well, uh, thank you very much. Muchas gracias a todos. Uh, thank you very much uh, to, of course, to all our friends that are uh, following us uh, every month and every session, but also to um, all those that uh, came for the first time, no? through Zoom, through Facebook. Also, uh, thank you to National Historical Commission of the Philippines for uh, streaming uh, this activity. And uh, if uh, you are interested in this, don't forget that every uh, first uh, Saturday of the month, we will have a session uh, devoted to some episode of the uh, Magellan Elcano uh, expedition. So, uh, well, next one will be the first uh, Saturday of March. It's uh, five also, five of March. And uh, we don't know yet we'll, uh, who will be the one to, to share with us uh, his, or his or her knowledge. But pay attention to the programs of Instituto Cervantes, to the Facebook, uh, where we uh, we announce our programs. Uh, muchas gracias a todos. Maramin, salamat po, sayon lahat. Adiós, gracias. Adiós. Y gracias también gracias. a nuestro intérprete, Chaco Molina. Gracias, Chaco. Adiós. Thank you very much.